Okay, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Black Coffee. I'm your host, John Brown, here today with my man, Jesse Thomas. How you doing, Jess? I'm doing well. I appreciate the opportunity, Mr. Brown. How is that you your young man back there? Yes, it is. All right. How you doing, young man? Good. How are you? Good, good, good. So let, let's get some baseline questions here just to kind of figure out what we're dealing with here. So where are you guys from? Uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, see, okay. Yeah, middle right of the map. Right on. And so married, single, what we what we got? Uh married. Married okay. got uh, four kids. So this is my oldest boy here. How and how how old are they? Boys the boys? Uh so my, my boys, uh this one here, he's a twin. He's got a twin sister. They're thirteen. Okay. Um my uh my youngest son is a well actually he just turned twelve a couple okay. weeks ago. Okay. And then I got a eighteen year old daughter. Okay, okay. And you, so you got twins at 13. Okay. Yep. So are you from Kansas City originally? Yourself? I am born and raised. Okay. Yes. And were you were you in the household with mom and dad? I was, yes. Oh, you're lucky. See? That to change yes, your life. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, by by the way your boy looks, I'm assuming your your wife is is also African American. She is. Okay, okay. Okay, good. So that's that's a good baseline. So I kind of know where we at, what we're dealing with. So, what what you got for me? Hit me with some questions. Well, yeah, no, I appreciate it. Um, again, you know, both of my boys, they've been playing football since they were six years old. So mm-hmm. about you know the last six, seven years old, mm-hmm. and they they claim that going to the NFL is is what they both want to do. Um, both mm-hmm. want to play wide receivers. So. Your story, of course, resonated um, with you and your boys. Okay, uh, and I, I'm also a, a former bodybuilder as well. So, oh, okay. Um, I, uh, I just again kind of wanted to pick your brain, man, and kind of see how I can yes. get these boys there. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Um, we have a lot of things in common. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Okay, um, cool. You know, with, with with my oldest here, I think one thing that I, I always kind of um, try to figure out with him is how to how to build that confidence how to know that you're the man and and you know kind of walk that trail between being confident but not overly cocky right and he's got a heart of a lion so he'll mm-hmm. fight to the death i think the one thing he suffers with right now being at 13 and he hasn't quite hit that puberty he hasn't grown like some of his peers mm-hmm. is that when he goes into games now when he sees a bigger kid Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what well, he he immediately assumes that they're stronger and they're better than him. That's kind of so, normal, you know, right? It's kind of it normal. Is, it is. I, I would think that way too. So, how tall are you, Jess? I'm I'm only five eight. Uh, and I your wife? About she is five three. So okay, they won't be tall. Okay, so that means to me they can either do running back or slot. Right. So that's that's what I think they're project at. Uh, yeah, the first thing I'm doing, I mean, as a bodybuilder, is he lifting weights? And how, if he has, how long has he been lifting weights? He is. So, uh, I actually own a gym. I own a facility. Um, mm-hmm. and we do training. We do sports performance training with youth and, and adults, the whole nine yards. So, I mean, he's this, I would say the last year and a half is, is like when we actually started getting on the weight side, but you know, again, since they were little kids, well, wait, like wait, on the weight side, what were you doing prior to that? Uh, a functional strength. So, you know, your sit-ups, your push-ups, your pull-ups, right, uh, right. you know, yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Um, you know, medicine ball stuff, a little bit of kettlebell mm-hmm. stuff, but, mm-hmm. but we didn't really get into like bench pressing and squats and stuff mm-hmm. uh, seriously in, until like the last okay. year. Okay. Okay. So my response to that immediately is, uh, when my kids were growing up, I would say we did zero functional training. Okay. Zero. Because what I wanted was, see, everybody likes functional training because it doesn't put you under duress. If mm-hmm. you're doing medicine balls, sit-ups, push-up, it doesn't put your body under duress. Like if I had you on squats, you know, to failure and only gave you 30 seconds rest and go, okay, it's your turn again. Now you're, you're kind of freaking out mentally because it's very difficult. So, and it puts right. you in a uncomfortable position and most people don't want to be in that. Mm -hmm. That is to say at his age, 
I would start him on a serious weightlifting. I call just about a bodybuilding training program, 90% free weights, 10% machines. That's what I would have him on because you got to get him strong. Now, when he's he's 13, and if he starts bench pressing way more than the guy that's across from him that's bigger than him, that's getting ready to tackle him, I guarantee you he's not going to be afraid. I guarantee you he's going to think, and I'm stronger than this guy because I've seen him in the gym with me. See, so you yeah. want to get him as strong as you can right now. So when he gets to high school, he's he's strong enough because he's going to be in the weight room in high school with other athletes, and he'll have a chance to look and compare himself to them. And when that happens, you want to make sure that he fares much better than the other athletes. He'll see how weak they are. And then that confidence that you're talking about will go through the roof. Gotcha. Yeah. What, what, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of training split did you have your kids on? How often were they lifting, you know, per week? Four days a week. So we okay. would do Monday, legs and back. Uh, Tuesdays, so Mondays and Wednesdays, legs and back, Tuesday and Thursday, chest, shoulders, and arms. Okay. So uh, we would do, I would have them do, about how many sets for chess is like not not including the warm up four eight a minimum minimum twelve sets per mm, muscle okay. group minimum gotcha. and we superseted everything so it wasn't no slow okay. play place sl- slow pace screwing around and was moving and grooving boom 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 sometimes we giant set three set three three movements at one time like bench press incline press dumbbell flies, then a back to bench press, incline, dumbbell flies. So we would always do stuff like that. Uh, so I would say he has to start getting him up to t- a minimum four sets each body movement, like bench press, curls, four sets, but don't count the warm-up set. So the, And then do four sets, four sets, four sets, and he should be able to get through, let's say, chest. Man. I had three, too. Three boys. It only yeah. took them maximum 15 to 16 minutes to do chess. Okay. Because we're moving. We ain't playing gotcha. around. So he yeah, has to start lifting too. like that now, especially he's 13. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah, we we own it. We own it. I appreciate a strong, it. Because a strong oh. guy, a strong man ain't going to let a weak man whip his ass. That ain't going to happen. Right. That yeah. just he's just that right. just ain't gonna happen. So that confidence yeah. you're talking about this is gonna come from, from weightlifting. Now weightlifting, as you know, to make the muscle grow takes a long time. Right. So that's why I don't screw around with track and field. Because that time that they're wasting running track, you're not gonna get that much faster. And it takes so long to get the muscle big. And so right now, okay. right now, is the most your boy's thirteen. So between 13, yeah. I would say, and uh, maybe 19 or somewhere around there, his natural growth hormone is working. So his body is producing growth hormone. It's producing testosterone. So this is the window for him to get everything he's going to need. Yeah. No, I agree with that. That's I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, something I heard you kind of mention in another podcast is the volume of work. Right, like mm-hmm. your kids put in more work than other kids. That's it. Yeah. We talked about the weightlifting, but what about the other stuff? I heard you mention like jug machine and stuff like that. So obviously, again, we do speed and agility here at the gym. You know, these guys they they practice, they play flag football and tackle, so they practice about five days a week. But I probably have them do speed work maybe another you know two days a week. But how you know what was your what's your thoughts on that? Like what's what's the value look like? How many how many balls? Are they he, how so. Do you do you have a jug machine? I don't. I've, I've been wanting to purchase one, but they're okay, so, pricey. Yeah, yeah they're pricey, but get a used one. Go online yeah. and search for a used jug machine. You'll find a good mm-hmm. one. That's what I did. Yeah. I found a used one, and the dude sold it to me for almost nothing. So you just got to look around. You'll find one. Uh, yeah. So what? What? How, this is how it would look for me. So he's thirteen years old. Uh, if he's not catching balls, 
right now on the jug machine, he's gonna be way behind. Way behind. It's almost like when we're talking about the volume of work. You can't if you're running a quarter meter, a four hundred meter race, and you got yeah. lanes one through six, and they let everybody go except lane one, your son's in lane one. And then when they get 100 meters around the track, they let your son go. Okay, go. Now you can go. He's so far yeah. behind. How are you going to catch up? Gotcha. Now, you don't ever want him to be left behind. And that means right. the sooner, the earlier, the better to start doing that work like routes, jug machines, stuff like that. Because in football, if he's a receiver, your main job is catch the ball. Right. You're not born to be able to catch balls. Yeah, you, you got to get him on the jug machine, and also get him in the park and have him running, jumping, and catching ball. Uh, I would yeah. take my we jug machine lie. to the park, you know, mm -hmm. and just just all the time catching balls, all the time. If he catch a million balls, he's gonna be all right. He's gonna have good hands. Yeah. And if you get out there and you have, because most kids, let's say, there's a high school near you. You pick three high schools near you. I guarantee you. I'm I'm safe. I feel safe in saying that 99% or 100% of those guys never catch jug, have a jug machine, never catch balls. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's, no, you're let's say that again. Hold on. Think about what I'm saying here. Three high schools from in your neighborhood. 99% or 100% of them boys do not have a jug machine at home and not catching balls. Right. How, how are they going to learn? You see, yeah. so going into high school, everybody's skill level in terms of catching balls are probably right here. But if you get on the jug machine between 13 and 15, his is going to be here. He's going to have the advantage. And then you take him to a guy who can teach him how to run routes. The rest is history. But no. No. right now, you you must recognize when I say the volume, you're running a quarter meter race, 400 meter race, and they already took off. And your son's like still in the blocks. And they, they, he ain't even taken off yet. How are you going to catch him? No, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. That that puts a different light on a different perspective. I mean, because again, you you don't know, right? Like what you don't know. And we, we catch the balls all the time, you know. I have my boys throwing it. Even my my youngest daughter, she plays flag football, so I, I have them all working together. Not um, enough, but you know, yeah, it's, it's they can only throw it so hard, and they can only throw so many passes. So, Thank you. You know, again, that's that's where my thought process was, and like, what does that volume really look like? How far are they behind? You know? But thinking about this, let's say you buy a jug machine, a used one, and when your sons get out of college or whatever, you can always sell and get your money back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I mean, you no, know how many I'm... guys wanted to buy my machine? It's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, so you'll you'll get the money back. It's just like a little investment for your for your kids. Uh but you got now what about route running? Uh, who's teaching them how to run routes? Yeah, so um I got a couple of buddies again. I'm in i I've been coaching um mm -hmm. myself youth, you know, youth football for some time. I got a couple of buddies on the high school level, uh coaching wide receivers that we, we try to get them work with that. Are they good um, enough? I've done a lot of I'm sorry. Are they good enough to get him to the NFL? Well, I mean, they one of the one of, both of them have played uh, arena ball. So I, I played a little arena ball myself. Both mm. of the guys they played extensive for a long time. Obviously, you know, it's not the so league. They, but so they know something. They are good. They know something. Oh yeah, absolutely. They have absolutely. some some knowledge. I, I trust them. So I mean, for now, I'm, I'm sure it's fine and it's okay to go with those guys. But at some point, when he's let me think. Thirteen when he's when he's fifteen, he has. To, you got to find the guy. Yeah, you got to find the best guy in Kansas City. I don't know where he's at. I don't know if he's an hour from your house, but you got to find that guy, and that's the yeah. guy you got to go to, even if you got to drive an hour away. Mm -hmm. You got to give. Yeah. You got to get the right people with him. Yeah, because the competition, yeah. as you know. As he goes from junior high to high school to college to NFL, it gets more and more competitive. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely look into that. I mean, I feel like I, I, I got somebody in mind. Um, so, yeah, we'll make that move, man. Um, I appreciate that.
cannot. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off if you were going somewhere. No, no, go ahead. No, no, no. Um, I'm you know, waiting on the questions. One, one thing that uh, kind of a, a different thought process of like how you carry yourself on the field. Um, me growing up, I was always taught to be humble, right? Mm-hmm. Like you score, hand the ball to the ref, mm-hmm. you did your job, move on. Mm-hmm. I feel like my kids, they just naturally kind of took on that same thing. They're very mm-hmm. quiet. They're very humble. Mm-hmm. But it seems like the kids who get the most looks and they get the most attention <laughs> are the ones who, who are flashy, right? Who who do the celebrations, who, you know, show what they got. And uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on that, man. I love that. Hey, everybody listening up, listen to what you just said. He's so right. And, and a lot of times what coaches do is, you know, like my kids are light-skinned because they're half white and half black. So I had to take them to the hood and teach them how to beat somebody's ass for a couple of times because they'll think that light-skinned guys are weak. They'll think the guys yeah. who make more noise is better. They'll think the guy who has the dreadlocks is the best guy. Just because the dreadlocks, it's weird. So mm-hmm. what I did was I made sure that my son didn't talk a lot. I said, but if anybody does anything wrong and tries some stuff they shouldn't try, you better whoop their ass. That I can yeah. tell you. All right. I taught them. I gave them permission to use all the bad words that they want to use because sometimes you need to know those words. So, <laughs> yeah, I gave them permission to do whatever you want. So we're not out here trying to play like some punks or, 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 or get pushed around. So, yeah, my kids are like that. Very, very kind of kind of humble. Uh, we don't talk during the game, but they're very physical and very aggressive if you tried to do anything you ain't got no business doing you end up in a fight i made sure of that i mean you're gonna be yeah. in a quick fight like in two seconds so yeah i ain't raising no punks so you gotta make sure that your boy you know i don't mind handing the ball to the referee but if he's handing it to him three or four times a game because he's in the end zone three or four times guess what now you're gonna and if he hands the ball maybe the other kids can say you know what i'm gonna start handing the ball like he does you know, yeah. so as long as he's scoring and always in the end zone, handing the ball to ref, it ain't no problem with it. Right. You know what I mean? But I agree yeah, yeah. with you 100%. A lot of coaches see that hoorah and all that talk and they think, oh, this guy's this guy this. Right. But what I want to tell your son, what's your son's name? David. David. A lot of guys who talk. Not a lot. I'm going to say 99.9% of them, they ain't that good. That's why they're talking. It's, it's like a guy who drives a big four-wheel drive truck. Most of the time when he gets out, he's only five foot tall. <laughs> he's compensating for something. So guys who talk a lot, they compensate for something. You know, and when you're dealing with a guy and he's across from you, he's talking, all you got to do is hit him in the mouth. I mean, I'm not talking about physically, but, you know, put him down. You know, play harder than he does, and getting his, getting his, getting his butt. He'll, he'll, he'll pay attention. He'll respect you more. But th- th- those guys who talk always know there's a reason he's talking. He's trying to compensate for for a weakness of his. So, yeah, yeah. I, I was telling my son, you know what? You ain't got to dance in the end zone if you want to. You can. If you don't, it's okay. But you know what? Make sure you get in the end zone five times a game if you need to. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's great. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, so, can, can, what kind of did you ever struggle with? Um, I guess this the sacrifices of time, like you know, again making them train, making them do those things. Like, did, did your kids fight that much, or were they just like on board? Like they was on board because I started at, when they were young. You yeah. start when they three three years old, four years old. They're always on board. When you start yeah. late. They may start tripping, but right. I can tell you what you're going to run into. How do I say this here? Every parent is going to run into, let's say, how old are you, Jesse? I'm uh, 37. So you're 37 years old. Your boy is 13. So five years from now, he's going to be 18, right? Mm-hmm. And so you're going to be in your 40s. And by the time he gets to be 18, he's going to start learning so much stuff about football from his coach, from online, 
when you're not looking at him, he's going to be online watching receivers. He's going to learn so much stuff, he's going to pass you up. And when he pass you up, it's going to be a, it's going to be challenging for you because that's what he's going to say to you, Pop, Dad, Papa, or whatever he calls you, Dad. That's that's old man stuff. That's uh, that's old. That's not current. No one's doing that anymore. And you're going to say, No, do what I tell you. But there's a point where he's going to pass or pass you, and you got to stop and kind of go, Okay, let me hear what you got to say. Okay, son, let's try that for a minute. Because remember, you're getting older, but he's getting wiser in, in reference to his given position. So mm-hmm. a lot of fathers have a problem with that when the son's knowledge passes up the father's knowledge. So when his knowledge passes yours up, you know, my older son always told me things like, Papa, that's not good. No one does that anymore. No one does. And almost everything he said was right. Almost later on, I found out Almost everything he said was right. So he would say we'd catch 202 balls a, a day. And sometimes we catch the fat of the football. And one day, one of them said, no, Papa, we should catch the tip of the football. And I go, where'd you find that out at? He told me, but I can't recall where. So I'm thinking, okay, is he right? I don't know. You know, I mean, maybe that's what's going on now. Let's try it. Go ahead and do it. So I let him do it. Catch the tip, you know? So I wouldn't say, no, don't do that. Catch the fat of the ball. No. Right. Maybe he learned something that I didn't know because mm-hmm. as I'm getting older, they're passing me up. So at some point, he's going to pass you up. And you got to be smart enough to go, okay. He, it sounds like he's bucking the system. No, Dad, I don't think that's right. And you may go, what do you mean you don't think that's right? You better do what I tell you. That's when you got to stop. Yeah. Take a deep breath and say, okay, let me see what you're talking about. You know? So when you when you run to that buck in the system thing, be careful. He may know some stuff you don't know because they're looking online. They're doing all kinds of stuff. They're learning a lot of stuff, those kids. Yeah, no, no, you're right. No, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, just like yourself, I think just having that bodybuilding, like, mindset of, of working out and because of we, you know, have the blessing of owning a gym, they've always been at it. They've always been working out since they were kids. But why did you have lifting so, weights instead of dynamic stuff? You know, you know what? Even though I know that there's no scientific studies out there about stunning the growth and stuff like that, yeah. that was always kind of a concern of mine. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was just in the back of my head. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? We'll do everything else that we can do, and then wait till they get closer to puberty to actually start like putting the weights. Okay. On. Well, I mean, I at mean, least you. You had some intelligent thought process behind it, you know what I mean? And you, you, yeah, you're looking yeah. out for your kids. You're, you're just trying to protect them, which which I understand. Yeah. But I think it's okay, like you said now, to get him started lifting weights because you mentioned, you know, how do you get his confidence up when it's a bigger kid across from him? And mm-hmm. trust me, I, I love yeah. working out with my kids. And then every now and then one of their buddies want to come over. In general, I don't like his, his working out with his friends. Cause I ain't trying to help other people, right? But every okay, now and right. then, I said, "Come on in, work out with us." Just so my son, our sons, could see how much strong they were than their friends. Yes. That's the only reason I let yeah. them in, so they can compare. Right. And once they start comparing, yeah. they go, "Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah." And just with the stuff that we've done, and you know, again, it's not like the weights are always around. So they're always trying to pick them up and mm-hmm. I would teach them for them and, and let them play around mm-hmm. with it, but never like put them through a real circuit and like a program until recently. So, I mean, pound for pound, like he's definitely stronger than any, any of the kids that he hangs around with and plays mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, once he gets that growth spurt and, and we, again, now that we're really into a program, yeah, he'll have no problems with that at all. But uh, yeah, I was just, again, kind of a little worrisome about that in the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, you, you, you know. your father who loves his kids and, and you're thinking about, you know, your kids and the outcome, which is smart. And we're already five. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm only five, eight. Yeah, so I'm like, man, yeah. if I stun him, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have nothing. Uh, so. What about sleep? How, how much on the weekends? I mean, during the week, you got to get them to go to school. But weekends, like Saturday morning, Sunday mornings, how, how what time do they normally wake up? Well, you know, it's typically because, again, all of my kids are so active. A lot of times we're, we're up because we got some kind of sport. In the what game. time? So on, I say most games, like, you know, a nine o'clock. What was he doing? What was he doing? 
with football season Sorry. and now, yeah, of course. So he has to get ready for football. But let's say no football season. How how often would he get up? They probably they probably sleep in until about ten o'clock on on a, on a Saturday and Sunday. Good. Let them, let them sleep as long as they want. You want them to grow? Yeah. They grow in their sleep. They don't grow walking around. So if you're concerned yeah. about growth, man, if your kids, my kids woke up tired and they had to go to school, I go, guess what? You look tired because I know my kids. I said, man, go back to bed. Yeah. Because you, the reason you're tired is your body's trying to grow. That's the reason you're tired today. Ain't because, you know, oh, yeah. because as long as you make sure they're not up until two in the morning playing on, on, on video games or something like that. So, right. so if they're not yeah. doing that, and you know they're not doing Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yo, and, I, and, and little Joker started, he started laughing. Is he, is he up yeah. late at night doing video games? Uh, I'm not really that. <clears throat> I don't stay up that late. Are you ever up playing video games? When your dad say you should be in bed? No, I go to sleep. I go to sleep mainly unless, like, I'm just bored and I can't sleep. Then. Jesse, is he? Make sure he's in the bed, sleeping. Absolutely. No, no yeah, video they, games. I mean, they're, they're, you have a, you got a cell phone, young man? Yeah. He wouldn't. My son, he wouldn't have no cell phone. Or, or, yeah, they, or, they, or they, if he did they, have they one, I would take it away from yeah. him. You know, when he comes home, you know, you don't need that in his mm -hmm. room. He don't need that phone in his room. No access to that phone. Yeah. Yeah, we've been thinking about taking it away, actually. Oh, he, he just minute, got it at 13. We got to start this whole thing all over. What's the, what's, the, what's the young man's name again? David. 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 Yes. So you got the telephone in your bed when you're sleeping? Uh, I have it by, by my side. Yeah, so, you, so man, you got, all, you got access to everything. You can go online and, and research everything else. Oh no, no, Jesse! You gotta take that man, yeah. take that phone away from him. Mm -mm. He can cry and do all he wants. Say no, you ain't getting that phone. Mm -mm. Yeah, he only needs that phone for. I wouldn't even give it to him then. Is that school? If he's at school and he's he needs to call you or something, shit. If it was my son, he wouldn't even have a phone at all. He'd borrow his friend's phone to call you. Yeah, them phones are are, are yeah. not good. I hear you. I hear you. There's a lot of scam the stuff long. online that he can get involved in. Yeah, and he knows that too. Yeah, yeah but he's sure. a kid. He's going to do kid things. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Like I said, me and his mother have been talking about it lately um, because of being up too late, staying on the phone, past bedtime, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, no, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, we 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 going we gonna to have to have some serious, you know, conversations about that. But, yeah, no, you're right. Um, and that rest is important. I try to tell him that. And I'd love for you, if you would, kind of, talk about the importance of protein because I've, I've purchased a ton of protein for this kid and he, he just has a hard time, you know, sticking with it and, and taking it like I tell him to. Well, <laughs> okay. So you just, let me make sure I understand this. You got him, you purchased protein and you want me to talk to him about taking it, how important it is. Yes, sir. Okay. So here's what I, here's what I'm saying to the audience. I'm not talking to the kids ever because the kids are going to do the kid thing. Yeah. I'm talking to Jesse. I got to talk to the father about how important it is. And if you think it's important, right. guess what? You're going to make sure he does it. It ain't up to him. Yeah. He ain't got no choice. So I would, this is how yeah. it happens in my house. I got my own protein that I created for my sons. I know important. It's how important. It's like, you know, it's so important. That's yeah. why you wouldn't got it. So my protein is cane right. protein. And if anybody's listening, they want to go get it, they go to cane, C-A-N-E, caneprotein.com. They go to the print that I've made, developed, had developed, had a company develop it just for my kids. So I would make dinner or my wife would make dinner. They would eat dinner. They'd have a glass of water and a glass of protein, a protein shake next to the water. When they finish their dinner, I'm standing there watching them eat. I'm not outside. I ain't in, working in the garage. No, I'm standing right at the table, like a like a guard. Mm -hmm. I'm standing at the training table, and when they finish, okay, hit the protein drink. My stomach's full. I don't care. You ain't getting up till you drink it. Drink that. Then drink that glass of water. Now you can go. I made them do it. 
So you can't leave yeah. it. it ain't up to him. It's up to you. He ain't too, he's not drinking yeah. it because of you. That's your fault. It ain't I, his. Yeah. You too. You too light Correct. on him. Correct. You you got you got you got to set some different rules. No more of that screwing yeah. around. Drink that or you ain't going nowhere. Period. He can thank you later. You're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We, yeah. So you you, we you making food? Trade. You making food and it's on the table and you walking away? No, 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 no. You got to stand there like 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 a, a prison guard. Let's go eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, you done eat? Let yeah. me look. Okay, good. Drink. Okay, good. Drink that water. Okay, now you can go. Yeah. And when they was catching balls on the jug machine, I didn't I have. I have three sons, so they can do it themselves. All three of them. Mm -hmm. They don't need me, but I'm there because I'm counting each rep. It's up to me, not to them. It's up to me to make sure they do 202. So I'm counting each rep. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm counting. Gotcha. So if he doesn't catch 200 balls, it's your fault. It ain't yeah. his fault. If he don't go to bed when he should, it's your fault. It's not his fault. It's always It's always mom and dad's fault. Understood. So don't don't I mean don't put, don't give him no options. Don't discuss things with him and oh well, we can, no this is what you're doing. Let's go get this done. Shit. Yeah. No, nah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I appreciate because you that. know Thank as a you. bodybuilder how important the protein is. Absolutely. And you're concerned about absolutely. growing. Oh my god, it's the building yeah, blocks. They, you're yeah. not growing unless you have the right amount of protein. And I guarantee you, 99% yeah. of the kids on the planet. Are not getting enough protein daily. I guarantee it. You know it as a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. So that's why I yep. tell people, man, if you're doing sports, and you ain't buying cane protein. You're foolish. You know, you better get the protein because and make them take it. Yeah. In no, the mornings you're, too. You're right. We're gonna have to check that out, man. I definitely, I, I'll, yeah. I'll get it. I'll get him some cane protein, and maybe, maybe that's why I know he didn't really like the one that that we got him. So see, uh, that's another thing. Some it, it, see. As, as a bodybuilder, I can tell you this. 98% of the protein I had tastes bad. And whenever I found one that was good, had a good ingredient and tastes good, I stuck to that sucker because it's hard to say. And all the guys who take my protein go, you know what we like? Your, my son likes your protein because it tastes good. It's not bad tasting. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's very important. Yeah, no. Nah, we don't get out of shot. I appreciate Look at that, that little joker back there on that phone. Oh. He don't like that. But I know he's doing things on that phone. I know what he, <laughs> David, I know what you're doing with that phone. I know what you're doing. They got them little videos on the yeah, phone, too. You ain't, you shouldn't be looking at. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, 13 you know, now, 13. too? Yeah. yeah 13. We've been yeah, there. Yeah. I told him that. I got you, boss. Can I, uh, I, I like to ask you about, like, recruiting, mm. right? Uh, again, you mm. amazing feat on getting all three of your mm. kids recruited to D1 programs. What's... What, what would be a uh, 10 for me? Like, I know social media is big now. Get the, get the, get the, now, pencil, get the pencil and paper out. Because this is going to be a, ready, a right? I'm, I'm going to give you as, as much as I can remember. So, first step is, as a parent, what school, which high school do you take him to to maximize his chances? How does it work? Is it the varsity coach? Who calls the college coach and say, I got a guy here named David. He's unbelievable. Please come look at him. How does it work? How does the machine work? And as a mm -hmm. parent, if you don't know how the machine work, and most, what do you call it? Um, let's call them uh, new era, new generation parents. Let's call them. They have no experience with that. Right. Number one. I am telling you, 99% of your offers will not come from that head coach, mm -hmm. from that school, will not. They're going to tell you, oh, I got these guys' offers. I did this. I can do this. They're lying. Yeah. Not that they're bad guys. Their plate is full with fundraising teaching your son, all the other kids, how to play football, how to do their program, teaching them all this stuff. Their plate is full. They don't have time to call a coach to talk to a coach about your kid. 
Only time they're going to talk about your kids is after he has 12, 15, 13 offers and another school called him because everybody else is all, come, all coming after your kid. Then he'll jump in and talk to that coach about your kid. Okay? So, yeah. number one, pick a school, in my opinion, a high school that has the biggest stage. Now, if he's a quarterback, it's a little different because only one guy can play. As a quarterback, you could have two good quarterbacks, but you only can play one. So you got to be careful. But as a receiver, running back, they use a lot of those guys. So pick the biggest stage that he can get on in your neighborhood where yeah. college coaches will come see him. Uh, mm -hmm. Seven on seven. It's unfortunate in my opinion, but it's become more important than high school football, just about. So why do I say that? Most of these college coaches, they have no clue what's going on in your neighborhood, in your backyard, who's the best kid. They have no clue. Right. So let's say he's at a particular college. His job is to come recruit your kid or kids. What they do is they go on uh, Rivals.com, you know, these kind of websites. Yes. So they go on Rivals, and they'll, they'll just type in California or Kansas. Who's the top kids in Kansas? And whatever the guys from Rivals and these websites put up and say these guys are the guys, those are the guys they generally go after. Yes. Not – the guy who's really the best. Mm, yeah. They have no clue who's the best. They just go by what there's written about kids. So that means this. If that's true, which it is, you better make sure as a parent that you start developing relationships with all these guys who work for these different websites. So I, I know Rivals gotcha. is around, and I don't know. some. Of, they got some new ones. I forgot the name of them. But they got 24-7. I think they're still out there. So 247. You got to get to know all these writers. Okay? So when you go, even now, when you go to 707, I guarantee you at every 707 tournament, they're there writing stories about kids. They have mm. to be there. They have to write new stories. They sell subscriptions. That's how they make their money writing stories so they will be there right. writing stories but you as a parent got to be able to recognize who's who when i first went to an event in arizona a friend of mine said i gotta go talk to this writer i go well, where, where right there i go which one and he's pointing to the guy i go how do you know he's a writer i know him and that's this guy next to him is one too I go, how do you know that they they, they, they dress a certain way and they always have like a backpack. They got a certain look to them. And it's true. And once you start noticing the look, you'll know the look. And you got to go up to those guys, introduce yourself, and get their information. Say, I got a son. You know, he, he loves football, this and that. Give him a you know, quick breakdown on your son. And always ask, is it possible to get this guy right then and there, take his camera out, Take a picture of your son from chest up. And he'll uh, give me his name, first, last name, what high school, what position. They'll ask all the information, all the measurables. Mm. And then see if he can put that up on his website. Yeah. This is, they call his wow. profile. Awesome. So don't wait until he's awesome. 16 to get a profile. I'll try to get a profile now. All they're going to say is no. That makes sense. You know what I mean by that? No, I make it makes total sense. I never thought about that at all. Getting having relationships with those guys, but you're you don't have right. a relationship, absolutely you're not right. getting a scholarship because the coaches, yeah. even in your neighborhood, all the colleges, they don't know anything about any of the schools. They're at practice every day, trying to get ready for the next mm -hmm. game, and then all of a sudden, a certain time of the year, they go, "Hey, uh, go recruit some running backs." He's like, "Holy crap." I got to go re recruit running back. Let's say that was you. 
and you're you're in Kansas, and you got to go recruit some receivers. And you're like, shit, how do I do that? You're gonna go to 24/7 rivals, and you're gonna start googling all these guys, and you're gonna start reading all the articles, watching the videos, and you're gonna make a list of all the guys they see are the best guys, and you're gonna go see those guys. That's what's gonna happen. Yep. And you better make That's sure perfect. your sons that won those schools. Because they may yeah. accidentally see your son. Right? They won't know about him. That makes sense? Perfect. That's the first yeah, wave. Absolutely. Perfect. That's the first wave. Yeah. So make sure you know, start a relationship with all these writers. Okay? It doesn't cost them money to put your son's profile out. They're not going to lose money. Right. Because at some day, at some point, you're going to meet some coaches. You're going to say, hey, Coach, how you doing? Good, good. How you doing? My name is Jesse, and uh, my son is David. David? Who's David? David Thomas. Oh, okay, okay. He goes, Coach, uh, I, I know you're busy, but uh, maybe you can check him out, you know? He's really good. He's one of the best receivers in the state, of, 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 in, the, in the whole state here or the county or whatever. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. First thing he's going to do when he gets to the office or to his computer, he's going to Google your son's name. And then he's going to hit enter. So when you hang up this phone today, you should Google your son's name, hit enter, and see if anything comes up. Most likely it's not. But that tells you if nothing comes up when you talk to that coach, you're playing daddy ball. And they're mm. gonna take you they're not gonna take you serious. But if you already talk to rivals, scout, and all these guys and and twenty four seven and they're doing these articles or Lisa's profile is up. When he Googles him, stuff's going to populate. Man. Now they're thinking, oh, okay, this kid, this kid must be good. Because, you know, not just his dad, but all these other people think he's good. You're manufacturing that. So you're allowed to yep. manufacture information on your son. Genius. Thank you, Mr. If you don't Brown. do that. I've never, never thought about You don't do that, and you better start now. You got to start yep. now. Because if not... I'm on it. I'm telling you right now, before you blink your eye, he's gonna be in the twelfth grade. Yeah. And you better make sure you did the right damn thing. So he got offers, and you're gonna look to your right, to your left, and there's gonna be a mom there and a dad there, and the kids have no offers because they didn't know me. They didn't know how to get them offers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's that's the first wave. Now, when he goes to seven on seven. Yeah, he plays to win, but the most important thing at 707, and when it's over, I wouldn't ask my son, did you win or did you lose? Did you get any articles written on you? That's what I want to know. Son, did you get any articles written on you today? If the answer is no, he didn't do his job. But remember my, my, right. my, my theory, kids will be kids. So that's why it's up to me to be at every event, and I talk to all the writers, and when it's over, I tell my son, come over here. Shake this man's hand. This is so-and-so, so-and-so. These are my boys. Oh, okay, I saw you. Yeah, woo, woo, woo. yeah coach, do, do, hey, man, get his profile up. Take his picture. Everybody move out the way. I just orchestrate shit. <laughs> you move out the way. Move. Take your yeah, camera out. Yeah. Take your camera out. Take a picture. I, I just I talk to him like that. And then they take the picture of your son, and then it starts, it starts happening. And every time you see him, how you doing? Shake the hand, you know? How you doing? You look good. What woo 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 you know? So once you know you look good today. You look good today, coach. And let let your son come up to him. So now we're in high school. Varsity games. Game is over. Win or lose, who cares? All of a sudden, all the kids are on the rail talking, kissing their mom, their girlfriends. I tell my boys, hey, I blow a whistle and I start pointing to the writers from the rail because I know how it works. See, your little girlfriend, all that, we don't care about that. Okay? Go to this yeah. guy right here, all get in the line, that guy and that guy before they leave the field and get some articles written. At least, how you doing? You look good. How many yards do you have today? And they'll, they'll, just, they'll just write some stuff down because they're recording it. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? That's the second wave. Absolutely. You have to, as a father, 
your job is to stand there and identify all the writers. And you start pointing to telling your son, here's one, here's one, here's one. Go up to him. If he doesn't go up there, grab your son's hand, walk him up there with you yourself. This is my son. Let me introduce you to him. Because he's a young man. When he's young, he, he's not ready for that, right? He's intimidated. So right. you, as his father, you take him up there. Okay, mm -hmm. now, now they're talking about your son. Next thing you want to know is you're going to be at, the, at your, your school, high school, and you're going to see a coach from Missouri come on the field. And you're going to go, holy crap, that guy's from Missouri. Maybe he came in to see your offensive lineman or your quarterback or whatever. I don't know. But if he comes on that field, man, you better, you, you better be at all the practice if you can, first of all. <laughs> you got to be at the – so listen to me, everybody. You got to go to the practices. Somebody from the family representing your son got to be at the practice because your son is practicing. You take care of the coaches. When that coach from Missouri walks on the field, you go over there and introduce yourself. Now, there's certain time periods, and I think there's some NCAA rules where they're not allowed to talk to you as a parent. But I don't, I don't care about mm -hmm. the rules, okay? You go up to them anyway because 99% of them are cool. Say, look, hey, hey, I know you yeah. can't talk to me right now, Coach. We don't need to talk a lot. Well, I got my phone right here. Give me your number, your cell number, and I'm going to send you some highlights of my boy. And they just give it to you. Right? You, just, you, you, you save it. Right. Every time you see a coach, you do that. And you start storing the numbers. If you yeah. saw how many coaches' phone numbers I have on this phone, I got everybody's phone number. For cell phone number, for Nick Saban on down. I collected them. Wow. So when I get home, hey, let's say they're in ninth grade. I'm sending them highlight films of my son. Workout videos. Not long ones, short ones. Just hitting them. Bam, 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 bam. Always in their ear. I'm getting the scholarships. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Don't email them or, no, I know. or hit them up on Twitter or, or no. TikTok. Hit them, get you got their phone number. Send that, send it straight to them. Right? Yep. Now, if you're at the school, listen carefully. There's another third way. That dude walks on the field from Ohio State and you see him, everybody sees him, and you go, okay, I'm going to talk to him, but you know, I'm a little nervous right now. I'm not going to talk to him right now. I'm going to wait till, till the timing is right. I'm going to wait. Because right now he's talking to the head coach when the time is right. If you wait too long, you're going to talk to your buddy to the right of you. You're going to turn around back to the left, and that guy is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Do you know why he's going to be gone? Not busy man. You know, let me tell you why he's going to be gone. Let's say he's from California. He flew in to see a group of kids at a high school in Texas. And this guy got off the airplane, got him a rent a car, takes him, what, two hours, three hours getting that car to finally get it. Now he has to drive from the airport another hour and a half, probably in traffic, to get to the school. He's like, man, I'm not flying all the way to Texas to see one school. I'm going to see, see if I can see two or three. So he's going to come up to Texas High school, park his car, run to the field, not walk, run, look at the kid he wanted to see, and once he see him, he's out. Because he's trying to get to as many schools as he can. The next school is probably another hour away with traffic or more. So maybe he can hit two schools. So he's not going to stay long. That's why I'm telling you, you got to talk to him as soon as you see him. Because you blink yeah. your eye, he's gone. And I wouldn't tell none of the other parents. Just walk up to him and introduce yourself. That's the third way. And do what I told you. Get his phone number. Yep. Get his cell phone number. You ain't working on no office phones, no emails, none of that crap. Cell phone. Yep. And don't say, hey, you have a, can I have your card? Oh, you know he's going to say? I don't have a card. I ran out. Yeah. That's, that's like, that's like, like being in high school, and you ask the pretty girl for a phone for her 
for a phone number, she's going to say no. If you ugly, <laughs> <laughs> you ugly, she pretty, and you say can't have your phone number, she's going to say no. So, right. but put her in an uncomfortable position and go, hey, how you doing? Good, woo, woo, woo. Hey, how about this? Hey, uh, uh, let me, let me, uh, well, that maybe that's a good, not a good example, but if you ask her for a card, she's going to say, no, I don't have a card. But if you, if you say, hey, look, I got a phone right here. Give me your cell phone number. I'll punch it in. That way you have my number too. You know what I mean? So, yeah. cause I had a lot of coaches right. tell me that I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have any more cards. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to talk to the coach. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to real quick. I'm good. I ain't going to say nothing. Woo, woo, woo. Get his information. Okay. Yeah. Now. After that, you send in videos. Now, this happens from the moment you get the phone numbers until he gets some offers. He's out of high school. It never stops. Mm -hmm. It never stops. And let's say you got a number to Nick Saban. He's not coaching anymore, but. And you text him. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Watch me, everybody. Man, I gotta start charging for this stuff. This this information I'm giving y'all is golden. <laughs> this is golden good. stuff here. I'm at lunch with some coaches, more than one. Here's her cell phone. That cell phone rings every two minutes. I go, damn! I ain't never seen a cell phone ring that much in my life. And here's what he do: He'll talk to me, and we're eating. He'll look down on his phone. He'll look at his phone, and he'll put it down. It rings again. Hold on, I got to take this one. Hold on, I have to take this one because he sees who it is that he really wants. He really wants this kid. So I got to talk to this kid right now. This is the number one kid or whatever. Right. I need to, I need to talk to this kid. So my point is, when you could get his number, text him and say, Coach, do me a favor. This is Jesse. This is my text him, not call him. This is my number. I met you at Woo 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 High School. This is me. You, my son was so and so. Here's this video. If you like, please program my number in your phone. If you don't ask him to program it, he may not ever do it. But if he likes your kid, he's going to program it. And it's good for you to remind him to program it. So when he's out eating and he sees that, and he goes, Jesse, oh, I need to take this. If you never remind him because he's busy, to program your number, he may not do it. And he's going to right. see some number, he's going to think it's a a prank call or some solicitors. That that makes sense? No, it makes yeah. So this 100%. is why you got to do this. Now, yeah. I'm not going to tell you everything, but I'll give you a couple of more tips here. Uh, so after that, you may be in a situation where a coach says, you know what, man? Because all the colleges have camps. Why don't you come to our camp? And your son, let's say he's 11th grade, no offers. Going into his his junior year, no offers. You got three colleges that want you to come. And they're far away. You got to fly there. They're so far away. And you're like, man, should we spend the money? You're talking to your wife about it. What if we fly all the way out there? We don't give us any offers. Man, you go, just, it's going to happen. You're going to be thinking, man, what do we do? Do we take spend this little money? We're not rich. We spend a little money we got on the airplane flight to go there, take them there, and we leave, and we don't get an offer? It's not a good deal. What are you going to do then? Right. So I'm going to give you some information. First thing you want to do this is like the fourth wave. You go, look, coach, call that joker up. Say, coach, look, we come to your campus because we, we love your school. You love every school that your son's interested in. Yep. And, well, let me finish that first. If I, I, was, gonna, I was thinking of something else, but if I forget, I forget. So I love your school, but coach, we got a problem. What's that? Well, we don't have a lot of money, and I got a, I got enough money to go to once to make one visit to one school, 
and we'd like that to be you. But can we can we can you do me a favor? What's that? Can you can you, is it possible to offer my son now? Now we're coming, coach, because you were number one on this list. But can you offer him? Because you know I got a problem with my wife here. She's thinking we don't have that much money and we'll waste all that money. And if you love him, we love you. Let's make this happen. You'd be surprised. Sometimes he says, hold on. He gives you the offer. Mm. Second thing you remember. Not second, but another situation is this. Coaches won't tell you this. If a you can't, they believe that a kid cannot marry a girl they've never seen. They cannot marry a girl they've never seen. So if you never set foot on the yeah. campus, they don't think they can get you. Mm. You can be the number one guy in the state, but if you don't set foot on that campus, they do not think there's a chance to get you. This is how they think, and it's, it makes sense. So when you show up and say, he showed up, oh, we got a chance to get him. Now we got a chance to yeah. show him our school, what it looks like. Now he sees the girl he's about to marry. So gotcha. it's sometimes it's good to go to those camps. If they're asking you to go, a lot of times you go, you don't get offered. But you want to talk to the guy in a certain way. Why? The offers don't cost them any money. Let me say that again to the audience. The offers don't cost them any money. They can give you an offer tomorrow and rescind it tomorrow. You understand mm -hmm. that? So they're not losing anything. So for you to ask for the offer is okay and it's stupid not to. He's not losing anything. He can say, you know what? We're trying to sign. He can say, you know what? Sorry, we, we, we descended the offer. They offer more wow. kids yeah, than they have scholarship. They have to. Because the, the, the ratio of how many kids is going to commit and decommit is crazy. So it doesn't cost them yeah. nothing. But if you don't ask, you don't receive. Yeah. So you ask every time you wow. see a coach, you ask the joker for the offer. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I never looked at it now, like that. All your friends going to think you're crazy, and what I'm saying is crazy, but don't listen to them. Why would I, man? You've you proven it. You've shown it. I got it. my you know kids I mean? all the offers that got except maybe three or four. I got them all. Yeah. I got them all offers when they were That's awesome, man. in uh, – Freshman in high school. No varsity tape. That's no varsity tape. That's very just, I, I know. I understood <laughs> the system. See, once you understand right. the system, yeah. you know, it works. I mean, I was, I was like, yeah. man, shit. I was serial dialing coaches. Wow. I'm like, hey, yeah. hey coach, I'm at California. It's 9 o'clock at night. I'm calling me call this dude up. Hey, hey, Mr. Brown, how you doing? Hey, hey, Coach, how you doing? Mr. Brown, man, it's, 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 it's 12 o'clock in the night here. I said, where you at? Oh, see, I'm in, I thought you were in California. I'm just talking shit, right? I thought you were in California, man. I mm -hmm. said, man, look, I called Coach. I text you like five times. Did you get my text message? Uh, uh, yeah, I said, man, Coach, you should have called me back. Sorry for waking you up, but I thought something happened to you. I thought you got in an accident or something you didn't call me. You didn't answer my phone. I got worried. <laughs> you see? I, I say what I got to say. Yeah. And when, and when I go to Man. when I go to the no, camp, that's... I got my messenger bag. I got my son's transcripts with me. Don't worry about school. He got to send you nothing. I go to the school. I get the transcript. <laughs> so if this thing about to go down, here, here's the transcripts right here, Coach. We ready to go. What, what can we do? Can you give me the offer? Because you don't know that as a father, and the audience listen up. If your son's a running back receiver, quarterback, whatever, you don't know if the quarterback coach, running back coach, receiver coach has the power to give your son an offer. Sometimes only the head coach has that power. Sometimes the head coach says, hey, I trust you. As a receiver coach, you have the power to give out offers without my authorization. But you don't know who's driving the bus. 
It's important to know because you'll talk to this receiver coach for the offer, and he'll go, he goes, I mean, let me think about it. He's saying to you, well, let me talk to my head coach. So you got to ask, coach, are you in a position to give the offers? You got to ask that question. And if you're not, no problem. I just want to yeah. know who's driving the bus. You got to talk to the right person. But you always, always, always ask for the offer. And if your son's been interviewed, gotcha. Dave, let me ask you a question. You live in Kansas, right? Yes, sir. You're a young man, but I'm going to ask this question anyway. Give me your top three schools you'd like to go to, university. Uh, Clemson, LSU, um, <clears throat> I don't know what my third one would be, but those are my top two. Okay. Very, 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 maybe because of where you're located, but that, I'm very impressed with his answer. I'll tell you why. If, you're, if I'm in California and I ask a kid in California, he's going to say USC, UCLA, Cal. If he says that, mm. it's not good because now he's not a national recruit. What your son just said, mm -hmm. because he mentions schools outside of your state, he just made himself yeah. a national, national recruit. Just the fact that he said other schools outside of his state. Now other schools reading, yeah. remember the coaches are reading this stuff because they don't know what they're doing. And they're going to say, oh, he's willing to leave his state. We like this kid. He's already, look, he, here's, here's his top four. He's, he's willing to leave the state. Now, now let's say you get to LSU. Yeah. And LSU's like, man, should we offer this kid? Man, we like him. He looks good in our camp. Should we pull the trigger? Now, a lot of times, here's another thing they're not going to tell you. Coaches will not tell you this. They're worried about kids from out of state. They get homesick and they want to run home to mama. Let me say that again to you. Coaches are concerned about drafting kids that come from too far away to their school because they get homesick and they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. So, no, they're thinking this way. Say, man, coach, you know what? And we really like California. Really? Yeah, I got a cousin that live in L.A. You got a cousin? That, yeah, my aunt lives there. You lying, but you got to say that. Because he's going to go back to head coach and go, hey, guess what? David got an aunt that lives in L.A., so if he gets homesick, he can go to her. You understand? <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. Yeah, now, yeah. now, what I'm telling you right now is this much of it. I told you a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. This recruiting thing is a trip. You got to know what time is and what's going on. Yeah, I see. I see. Because I never, you told me a lot of stuff, man. I never even. Yeah, it's not just playing right? football, like, tackling, through. catching, and running to get them scholarships. No, 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 no. There's more to it than that, big boy. Yeah, it makes sense. 100%. So you got to start now getting, getting, getting your, sharpening your pencil to start getting those, those offers. Don't even waste time. So we got, I got, I got time you know, for one more question. If you got oh, anything. Uh, well, if you don't mind, it'd be, it's, it's, it's kind of off the football route. I would love to ask you, what was it like becoming Mr. Universe? You know, that's a good question. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, I'm from, I'm from, I always felt just like my mom and dad's son. That's all. I, I didn't feel like, I never felt like Mr. Universe. I didn't know what that is. You know, I'm just. Yeah. I'm just a guy who yeah. started lifting weights, wanted to get out of the hood, and started playing football, but our team was was crappy. I didn't like team sports, so I thought, man, you know what, let me just try this thing, because this guy told me I could do it. And I try, now I started lifting weights, and I said, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go all the way. And then when I won, I'm telling you, I remember standing backstage like it was yesterday, and they called my name. I'm like, okay, John, you got to walk out on this stage with all these people looking at you. And you got to pretend you're happy that you won. I wasn't happy. I was just like, whatever, you know? And I remember I was fake <laughs> smiling on the stage. Yeah. I said, oh, I don't want to smile too much, but I got to smile enough so they don't figure me out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, because I trained to win. Wow. I'll be pissed if I lost. I expect yeah. to win, right? So if you train to win, you right. win, you're not surprised. Right. Like, well, what do you think I did this for? To take second? So, yeah. 
uh, I just felt like, I don't know, I just felt like me. And it didn't feel any, any, any different. No, 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 this is weird, you know, but yeah. But I'm glad you yeah. asked that question about recruiting awesome, because, man. man, I unfolded a lot of stuff to you. And there's a lot more. Think about what I just said. There's a lot more. Yeah. Dude, nobody else on the planet going to tell you what I just told you. Nobody. Nah, I've never heard it. I've never heard it before. Like I said, I've never even coach, thought about getting none of the gonna, right look, A lot of head coaches don't yeah. even know what I'm telling you. They don't even know. Yeah. Yep. Nah, it's it's it's, it's genius, man. I, I appreciate it, and I'm gonna get on it. I promise you, I'm, I won't let I won't let them down, man. That's part of the reason why I do what I do. You know, nobody yeah. helped me, so uh, I'm, I'm. How's it? I'm how's his grades? Sure. Oh, his grades are excellent. What, what, what? Yeah, he's a he's an A plus. Oh, A plus, David. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. That's what I want to hear. A plus. Okay, that that's that's excellent, young man. Keep okay. that work up. Keep keep listening to your mom and dad and do what your mom and dad tell you, you know? And stay off that cell phone. I know what you're doing in the night. You ain't tricking me. You're tricking your old man. But I know what you're doing. Yeah. Take that cell phone from you, young man. But that's that's excellent, young man. Uh for you know, plus A plus, that's fantastic. You you can go a long ways there, young man. Keep following your dad and mom's footsteps and, and do what they tell you. They're gonna guide you in the right direction. Man, I'm telling you. Hey, Jesse, I'm glad you called me, man, because I'm I'm talking to parents all the time. I'm like, man, no one talks about recruiting because the recruiting thing is a trip, and it's even more than that. I mean, it, oh, it's yeah. so much to yeah. it. No, I, you I, think it's like going to high school, I, I, the coach, the varsity coach, I don't know, getting contact somehow with the university, and it happens. No, it doesn't happen like that. And guess what, big boy? You only got freshmen. Sophomore, junior year to get scholarships. Senior year, you, it don't count because all the offers are gone. They're on the second class. So when he's a senior, they're not getting mm-hmm. nobody getting the offers as a senior. They're looking for the juniors and sophomores. Right. So you're cl- you're on the clock right now. You're on the clock right now, Jesse. Your boy's on the clock. Time to get and don't yeah, and, and same thing with your twelve year old. Is uh, he playing too? Yeah, he is. He he uh he's actually at practice right now. Or okay, he would be. Okay, good. And if you have you got sooner or later, later on down the line, there's gonna be more questions about recruiting, especially when you get deep into this thing. And and I'm telling you now, mm-hmm. you're gonna like the next thing I'm about to say in closing. Don't hold him back if he graduates at 18. If he graduates at 17, you put him in his right grade. But if he graduates at 18, you keep him in there. Okay. Because what happens is I got you. a lot of people are doing that because they don't believe in their kids. They're holding them back because they don't believe in them. Mm-hmm. And then nobody like look, no one likes anything old. If you want to be a singer, they're like young singers. The younger the singer, the better. If you go to the NFL, the younger you are, the yeah. better. They don't want nothing old in the NFL. That so why sense. would you hold them yeah. back? That and when you sense. hold them back, you, all you do is play with younger kids, beating up on the weaker kids. How's that going to make your kid better? It's going to make him worse. Mm-hmm. You got to somehow, he has to learn yeah. somewhere in life to fight and to compete. He has to learn that somewhere. If you shelter him, hold him yeah. back. No, that's foolishness. He'll look good, look, in high school because he's playing with little kids. He. He get a scholarship because right. he playing with little kids. But by the time he gets to college, second, third year, things are gonna start changing. Cause some of those guys red shirted, got or had a, a, a or, or got injured somehow, and now they're grown men. So he's gonna have to play. And he, but he's like, man, I ain't never played with kids bigger, stronger than me. I never. I've been sheltered. Now, then what's he gonna do? Yeah, he's done. He may make right. it to the league and play one year or something, but you gotta you gotta keep him competitive. Teach him how to fight somewhere. Mm-hmm. You don't fight by playing younger yep. kids. You don't learn how to fight. Yeah. Yes. Build that adversity yes. for sure. All right, dog. No. Hey, well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
uh, every everything yeah. has been great, uh, especially the raccoon piece. That was that was man, that shined a lot of light on the I'm situation. I'm telling you, man. So thank you very the much. raccoon's a trip. You get to, you'll be there real quick too. Thirteen years old, you can be there fine. When is his birthday? Yeah, uh, January. You gonna be, be there overnight? Next, thing you know, as soon as he hit high school, ninth grade, it starts. You're on the clock. Yep, the clock starts. Don't listen to them parents. Yep. Well, there ain't no varsity film. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. It doesn't cost the yep. coach any money, any stress, anything to give you an offer. He can rescind it. It's not like written in stone. If he gives you a verbal, he has to commit. He can't change it. It doesn't work like that. It's only a verbal commit. They can descend that thing, rescind it. They can say, okay, we're not we're not honoring that. So it's not gonna hurt them. They give out, yeah. let's say they have 10 scholarships to give. They'll give out maybe 30 offers or more. They always do that. Mm -hmm. So why why not ask? Right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And then you know, it only helps build his resume, like you said, when you talk to those those uh those writers, you know, who's offered you, who's done this. So yeah, yeah. that's that's the key, bro. Okay. okay, good. I just gave you some good knowledge right there. All right, dog. Absolutely. Well, hey, Absolutely. Well, appreciate thank you, that. Man. I truly appreciate hey, keep it. Keep that young, young man. Keep thank making you those grades, young man. Good job. Proud of you. You stay away from stay away from the little nasty girls because I can see it in your eye that you. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watch that little boy, little nasty boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I know. I know. All right. Away from. All right. Yeah. Hey, so, girls are dream you. killers. Have a Be night. careful, boy. I'm telling you. All right. I know. I heard a lot of stories. Yeah. Take care.